So here we are going back to 2008. It's a real throwback to Riley Bodycomb's first no-gi match after a few years of Sambo competition under his belt. And it's also the first time that Team American Sambo had put forward a no-gi competition team. This was at the Northeastern Grappling Challenge sponsored by Team Bomb Squad up in Ithaca, New York. And uh, it's a great example of how of things you have to look at when you're when you're transitioning to primarily a gi based sport to a no gi based sport and this is what was very successful for Riley scissor takedowns in sambo and um, had some trouble transitioning to no gi here it's his first time out and you'll see he tries it fails ends up with his opponent in his guard so let's go back and look at that again um, what's real important is your initial point of contact. So in Sambo or in Judo or Jiu Jitsu, you're used to having a, a, a handhold on the gi, but there, that doesn't exist here. So um, Riley went for the collar tie. Uh, a better choice, which later was learned in the future, is to go for, let's say, a whizzer. Um, the second problem is this far distance that Riley has to cover, right? So normally um, that is way too far. And um, you want to be cutting the angle before you launch your scissor takedown. So you're trying to get to at least a 45 degree angle on your opponent, like a hip to hip type of situation. You know, you never get quite hip to hip, but that's the direction you want to be going. Um, some other factors here, aside from the, the collar tie, you know, the poor handhold and the distance, if you look at Riley's body position, his head is so far forward of his knee and feet, right? So he does not have a good foundation for balance from which to launch his scissor takedown. Uh, all that weight, like what his strength in his body right now is trying to keep him upright. And that collar tie is actually helping keep him upright. Because if that opponent wasn't there, he would fall forward with his head so far forward of his knee and foot. Conversely, his opponent's head is closer to the knee and foot, almost in a straight alignment, which gives him a better foundation from which to move. And you'll see, like, when the attack does happen, Riley launches, and because of his opponent's better situation of balance, he's able to circle left and away from the scissor takedown. Um, again, Riley's got poor balance, poor handhold, and a long way to travel to get around to the outside and behind his opponent for this scissor takedown. So where in Sambo, where we might have a jacket grip or over the shoulder to the belt, um, where we can have a better handhold from which to hang and swing on our opponent, that didn't exist in this case. So it was almost destined not to work. But it's a great lesson to learn, and in the future, as you guys know, if you've seen any of Riley's matches, his scissor takedowns became a staple of his no-gi game. But this is, you can see, a first attempt, which is a failure, and you have to fail in order to get better at things. Um, so he fails, and his opponent ends up in his guard, which now, an open guard is much more familiar to a Sambo player, because we can't close our guard, and the no-gi legs are familiar to Sambo players because we always compete in shorts. So here his opponent starts off doing the right thing, getting that posture. And um, what he should have done was peel off Riley's reaping leg, Riley's left leg, which is out of view on his camera angle. But um, we always say you get your posture, you peel the reap, and then you stack. But in this case, and he could have went for that uh, exposed foot of Riley's as well, but he was so focused on the attack going on on his leg. So, but rather than peel the reap and stack, he spins, right? So that's a common um, sort of thing. Oh, turn out of foot locks. But that's not exactly what you want to do. So what you can see here is he spun out of the foot lock without clearing the reap. Um, and expose the heel hook, and Riley just grabs it right there, right? So when you turn away from your opponent in the middle of an attempted footlock, you are turning your hip, turning your knee, and as that chain goes, you're exposing your foot. And like I said, he didn't control for Riley's reap, so as he turned away, he gave Riley the open door to complete that reaping motion and then 
assume a good leg control, clamping down his thighs on his opponent's thigh above his opponent's knee, right? And that's really what uh, led to the end of this match. And you can see at this point, Riley's got great leg control. His opponent's rolling left and right, left and right, trying to escape. But no matter what happens, Riley's able to stay with him because of that thigh control. You control the thigh, which means you control the hip, and which means you can follow the opponent. And there, Riley gets the inverted heel hook for the finish because he never gave up the leg. And if you watch it in slow motion, there he turns away. Riley still has the heel hook low side heel hook now he's pinning his opponent's leg with his body which makes it even harder for his opponent to move but he gets it free his opponent tries to spin out again which is the direction you want to turn is with the heel hook that's the only way to relieve pressure on your knee but you can see riley gave up the foot but not the thigh there's the great a shot of Riley's thighs clamped on his thigh. He gave up the foot there. His opponent's foot is in the middle of his chest right now. No threat on, on the foot, but because the thigh control is so strong, wherever his opponent goes, Riley can follow him. And that is where, in the right armpit, is where Riley will eventually place the foot, right? So you'll see his opponent continues to try and spin out. Riley keeps the thigh control, and at the right moment, places the foot in the armpit for the finish right there and inverted heel hook and it's all over for Riley's first uh, no-gi competition and first win in no-gi competition.